How can I adopt an entrepreneurial mindset? Entrepreneurial mindset is key to success in anything you do in life. People often mistake it to starting a new company, but it's not. You can be a fresher, a manager, a VP and still have have the mindset of an entrepreneur. It usually is about the way you think, plan and act towards your goals and react to opportunities around you. People with entrepreneurial mindsets are often drawn to opportunities, innovation and new value creation. Characteristics include the ability to take calculated risks and accept the realities of change and uncertainty. Few things that will help you succeed with entrepreneurial mindset at work 1. You will take action. Not just plan but focus on execution. 2. You will be resourceful. Get things done by going out of the way. 3. You obsess about results. You focus on what matters. 4. You love challenges. You take risks. You are not afraid of failure. 5. You are constantly on the move. You don't waste time. 6. You learn from experts. You value ideas from others. You collaborate and succeed. With the entrepreneurial mindset, you either have it or you don't. Like some people love adventure and others don't, this too can't be learned or taught. What you can do is to acquire a knack of spotting opportunities. Most opportunities for a startup come to you in your everyday life. This includes the place you work at, the challenges you face at school and the issues people, your friends and co-workers, whine regularly whine about. For example, it was a real problem for Faninder Sama, CEO and co-founder, to find tickets for his commute every weekend to his hometown Hyderabad, that led to the start of Redbus. Once you have identified the opportunity, start looking for a solution and see what your users are saying about it. If they like it, ask them to pay. If many of them pay, you have a potential winner at hand. It's actually not that difficult. There are two basic parts to the entrepreneurial mindset. The first part many have already pointed out below. That is the ability to spot opportunity. The basic skill for this is active listening. You have to be a good listener to truly hear other people's challenges and pain points. The second part is more difficult in the book, The Hypomanic Edge, feels that this second part is genetics. You have to have a very optimistic and risk-taking personality. Once you identify the pain points you have to think up the solution and have the optimism and courage to ACT. The acting part is very very hard and very scary. Most people are prone to inertia and let their good ideas and observations pass their expiration date. Then when they are old, they say, I coulda, woulda, shoulda. However, MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, disagrees with the thesis of the hypomanic edge. Under the MIT hypothesis, if an institution provides a structured and supportive environment for entrepreneurship, then people not gifted via lucky sperm can also be an entrepreneur and succeed. MIT has provided such an environment and process and has produced a disproportionate number of startup companies. Same for Stanford University in SV. So who is right? I'd say they both are. You can become one via the genetic inheritance from your ancestors or if you find yourself in the right environment, you can also become one. It sounds to me you already have an entrepreneurial mindset, but are struggling to identify problems or customer pains. I don't think the reason that you cite as to why you can't spot opportunities are necessarily linked, but either way, I wouldn't let that hold you back. Before you can spot an opportunity, you have to spot a problem. What are some problems you yourself, or those around you are experiencing? Some of the greatest businesses have been built around founders, scratching their own itch, so to speak, so it might be enough to think about your own problems but that's not a strict rule. Once you have identified a problem, try to identify how many other people are experiencing the same problem. If the pain is strong enough for these people, and if you can qualify whether both you and they would be willing to pay for a solution to the problem, then, you have yourself a viable value proposition around which you can start to build a product or a service that you can take to the market. Remember the thing that separates the entrepreneurs from the hobbyists and the inventors is those that build solutions that people are willing to pay for, as opposed to those that build solutions for the sake of something else be it fame, excitement or an excuse to escape reality.